the time of release has now come and for every afflicted saint and for everyone in any adverse situation and anyone that is going through some challenges in life these are verses that give us assurance that that thing will not last for long it will not last beyond the prayer of faith it will not last beyond the mention of the name of jesus it will not last beyond the day we take hold of the horns of the altar and we say today i will be blessed and today those problems are gone in jesus name look at that verse 16 again confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much as we look at these verses of scripture i'm talking to you today on the power of faith and perseverance in prayer the power of faith and perseverance in prayer there are three things we're looking at number one the patient perseverance of the afflicted saint the patient perseverance of the afflicted saint there's no murmuring there's no despair there's no discouragement and there is no spirit of running away running away from home running away from the church running away from god and there is no allowance for suicide there's no allowance for destroying ourselves there is patient perseverance of the afflicted saint point number two the precious promises for adverse situations the situations will come across they are the crossroads of life is there for the young is there for the middle-aged person is there for the believer is there for the unbeliever is there for leaders is there for followers is there for even a family and sometimes it's there for a local church and for the old church adverse situations and yet there are promises in the word of god and as we look at those promises in the word of god for adverse situations i need to tell you something just reading them will bring performance in your life just hearing them i didn't know that was there it gives you hope it energizes your faith and then it broadens your rising then you understand although you thought you were cornered you thought you were confined you thought you were hedged in the promises of god will open the door wide before you and tell you here is the way of escape and you rise up you escape every adverse situation in jesus name the precious promises for adverse situations number three the powerful prayer kinds of prayer many different kinds of prayer but there is one that is prevailing there is one that is powerful there is one that removes every mountain the powerful prayer of his appointed servants his appointed his servants like in the in the days of old he appointed the moses for the children of israel bring them out of the captivity and because that's the will of the lord it was done you will come out out of every prison you will come out and out of every predicament out of every confinement you are coming out in jesus name appointed servants of the lord appointed in a family like the father in a family 
appointed over a local church like the local pastor in that local church appointed by God over the general church you might even call it a national church and when that one appointed by God when he prays for the people he is appointed over there's going to be explosion of power and I can tell you this morning there's a spiritual supernatural bulldozer caterpillar that will shake everything shakeable in your life that will remove every mountain in your life that will crush the power of evil in your life and today everything that binds you will be broken down in jesus name the powerful prayer of his appointed servants come to point number one point number one the patient perseverance of the afflicted saint we're coming back to james chapter 5 and i read from verse 7 james chapter 5 verse 7 it says be patient therefore brethren children of god saints of god afflicted saints be patient patient therefore brethren unto the coming of the lord Behold, the husband man waited for the precious fruit of the earth, and has long patience for it, until he receive the early and the latter rain, until the church, until the people of God, until the flock of God receive the early rain and the latter rain. There will be showers of blessing. Be also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh, grudge not one another. You know, it's so easy. When there are problems, when there are challenges, when there's affliction, and we don't know where the problems are coming from. We don't know where the challenges are coming from. And we don't know where the affliction is coming from. And you examine your heart, you examine your life, you examine your surrounding, you examine your actions, and you say, I, I can't find the reason for this. It's very easy then to begin to grudge innocent people, grudge even people who are a blessing to you, and begin to grudge people that you think, because you don't know who is causing the affliction. And therefore you grudge this and grudge that. Even the people that stretch hands of help and hope to you, you grudge them. So easy. But you'll stop grudging anybody. Did you say amen to that? Yeah. Grudge not one another. The problem is not from them. But the solution is coming from on high. You'll overcome that devil that is causing the problem. Those demons causing the problem, you'll overcome them. Your brother is not your problem. Your sister is not your problem. Your a fellow believer is not your problem. Grudge not one against another, brethren. Lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth at the door. Take my brethren. The prophets, those who have gone before us, take my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction. It says you are not the first person to go through the kind of thing you are going through. Others have gone through and they went through successfully and they have place the trail the path before us i need they overcame thank god i see an overcomer before me there you will overcome in jesus name take them for an example of suffering affliction and of patience behold we count them happy 
it tells us which endure ye have heard of the patience of Job and you will not go through you cannot go through one percent one over hundred of what Job went through and yet he was patient you have heard of the patience of Job and you have seen the end that means the outcome the performance the result the conclusion by the Lord that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercies he just spoke about Job now he had problem Job and the wife was not the problem the friends were not the problem the servants were not the problem the problem was Satan but he didn't know he didn't know like many people today challenge affliction problem all we see is the roaring of the sea all we see is the noise in the air all we see is the turmoil and the confusion and the conflict in the land i was think is this or that or that causing the problem it was satan but even though he didn't know was seen the patience of Job, the patient perseverance of the afflicted saint Job, chapter 1. I read from verse 20 patient perseverance. And Job is given to us as a worthy example by the Spirit of the Lord. Job, chapter 1, verse 20. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and he fell upon the ground tell me and worshiped you know there are people they will not come to worship at such a time look at what happened to the family look at the one that died look at the fire that burnt everything that he had and look at all the servants destroyed look at all his cattle all his herds destroyed the people that will say if life is like this no more worship no more prayer no more singing no more serving the lord and he worshiped and said naked came i out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord came. He said, when I came into this world, I didn't have anything. I didn't have shelter. I didn't have job. I didn't have money. I didn't have servants. I didn't have cattle. I didn't have all these things that the fire destroyed. Okay, the Lord gave. I didn't force him to give me. He gave me. Of his own free volition, the Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. He said, what's the big deal? He gave me, and he had his reasons for giving me, and he's taking it away. And he has his reason for taking it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I pray God will give us grace. In the New Testament, we have greater grace greater understanding, greater knowledge, and we see Calvary, and we see the provision of Calvary, and Job never saw anything like that, and yet he had patient perseverance in his affliction. In all this, Job seemed not, not charged God foolishly. James tells us, we have seen the patience of Job, and we've seen the end result from the Lord. Job chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 9. Job chapter 2. Reading from verse 9. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Cause God and die. Hold on, before you condemn the wife of Job. All their children 
had died as the house fell on them, ten of them, in chapter 1, she said nothing. All the cattle, all the herds, all the property, everything, fire came from the sky. And the person that, re that reported that said, the fire of God came down, punch everything. She said nothing. All the servants were gone. All the children were gone. The property, the building is gone at home. And the bundle of joy she had, everything had gone. She said nothing. Only Job said, God gave, God has taken away. She was quiet. And now in chapter 2, the sin descended on the husband Job. Boils all over. Pains all over. Scratching himself with his support shed. And he was lying on ashes. And when she saw her husband Job in that condition, he said, Are you still going to hold on to integrity, sincerity, faithfulness, righteousness, holiness? And you're still going to remain steadfast? This is too much. She couldn't go to the end of the road. Well, thank God for Job. Thank you for my brother. Thank God for my brother there. Thank God for my sister there. You'll get to the end of the road. Yeah. We're going to see the end of this matter. Yeah. This affliction will not be forever. Yeah. We're not going to open our mouth and say anything negative against God, against Christ, against the Holy Ghost, against the Bible, against the church, against leadership, against our family, whatever it takes, we seal up our mouth. And we look up to God and we know our hell is near. It's as near as the end of the service today. Verse 10, and he said unto her, Thou speakest, as one of the foolish women speaketh, I thought, I, I didn't know you could say that. For me to curse God, if I curse God and die, you want to send me to hell. It means I abandon God, I curse God, I push God away, and then he kills me, I die, and I go to hell. How could you talk like that? What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this, did not Job sin with his sleep? Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Let me come back to the wife. What she said, she took it back. As the husband said, you talk like one of the foolish women. I expected something higher, something greater from you. You shouldn't have said that. There was no reply. And there was no insult, no assault. There was no complaint. She didn't say, okay, if that's the way you want to live, you want to keep serving God in this condition, count me out, I pack my load and go. They didn't separate, you know, and they didn't divorce, and the woman never opened her mouth at any other time to say anything negative. And at the end of Job, the book of Job, when God rebuked, the three friends of Job, who spoke and spoke and spoke, he never, God the Almighty and God the righteous judge never said anything against the wife. She said it because of the condition. She was sorry when the husband replied her. I shouldn't have said that. And she kept quiet all the way through she was still the one preparing this food she was still the one preparing bringing the water 
she was still the one taking care of those three friends that came to Job eventually just one sentence in a moment of time and don't condemn her permanently it wasn't a permanent situation with her she kept her mouth for the rest of the time maybe you said something foolish yesterday or last week or last month you repented of it god has forgiven and forgotten it will not be remembered against you anymore in jesus name chapter 5 of job i'm reading from verse 6 chapter 5 verse 6 although affliction cometh not forth of the dust neither does trouble spring out of the ground yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward i would seek unto god i would seek unto god i'm not going to run away from god because of the trouble sparking up here sparking up there and every part of the body is feeling a burning sensation as it's as if fire is burning one, one would even prefer to die than to live all the same i would seek unto the unto god unto god will i commit my case which doeth great things and unsearchable marvelous things without number i am still expectant and today whatever you have gone through and whatever problem you have brought here i am expectant for you and you must be expectant for yourself in jesus name chapter 13 of job you have heard and now you are hearing of the patience of job look at this chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 15 though he slay me yet i will trust him it's my hope my final hope it's my hope my only hope it's my hope it's the one that created me he brought me here for a purpose and until i finish what he created me for it's not going to get rid of me and though he slay me yet i will trust in him but i will maintain my own ways before him amen in verse 16 he also shall be my salvation my salvation he will save me he has saved me from sin he will save me from suffering for an hypocrite shall not come before him amen, amen. chapter 23 job chapter 23 i'm reading from verse 8 Job chapter 23 verse 8, Behold, I go forward, but he's not there. I'm backward, and I cannot perceive him. He says, I remember, in the past, I used to go to that place to pray. I'm going there. And then I go forward, I get there, I pray, heaven is sealed up. I said, okay, I remember, I used to go to that place at the backyard, and I will pray, and God will answer, and I go there, and I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, in verse 9, where he does work, but I cannot behold him. He hides himself on the right hand, and I cannot see him. God, where are you? The affliction is much. The heat is coming to a great kind of degree. I cannot bear this. I'm looking for you. I'm searching for you. But he knows the way that I take. And when he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Don't lose hope. I said don't lose hope. Don't give up. Hell is on the way. Verse 11, my food shall as held its steps. Its ways have I kept and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his leaves. You know, when people have problems, 
not up to the problems of Job. They stop reading the Bible. I've read enough Bible. If I seek of all the Bible I've read, and all the verses I've heard, since I started coming to this church, everything has filled my brain, has filled my heart, but where am I? What has it got me to? Why am I still reading the Bible? Are you coming for the Bible study to Bible study? Are you joking? If you know what's happening to me, and if you know how penniless I am, to even go to the groceries to buy what I will eat, if you know my condition, you'll not be asking me of Bible study. But you know, Job, he said, I'll go to the Bible study if I can. I'll hear the word all the same. I read the Bible all the same. Problems will not alarm me. And all those things will not crush me. It says in verse 12, Neither have I gone bad from the commandment of his mouth. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Chapter 36. We're looking at Job chapter 36. And I'm reading from verse 7. Job 36, verse 7. He withdraws not his eyes from the righteous. But what kings are they on the throne? Yea, he doth establish them forever, and they are exalted. You are coming to the end of that affliction. You are getting nearer and nearer the exaltation. And you are going to experience that establishment that he promised in Jesus' name. Verse 8, And if they be bound in fetters, and beholding in cords of affliction, then he showeth them their work and their transgressions, that they have exceeded. Look at verse 10. He opens also their ear to instruction, to, di to discipline, and commanded that they return from iniquity. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures verse 15 he delivers the poor in his affliction and openeth their ears in oppression i will say amen over here amen. and you know what james said he said you have heard now we have read of the patience of job and you have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is pitiful, is compassionate, and he will not allow that sin, that affliction to carry on for all eternity. Look at Job now, chapter 42, verse 1. There's nothing that has a beginning which does not have an end. Did you hear that? The pain at the beginning is going to have an end. The sickness at the beginning is going to have an end. Affliction, sorrow, suffering, it began at a point in time is going to end at a point in time. Yeah. We're getting ready to rejoice. Yeah. Getting ready to celebrate. Yeah. Look at Job. Job chapter 42, verse 1. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know, I know, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholding from thee. Look up here, brothers and sisters. What Job knew, he just didn't know now. He knew that all along. 
the friends that engaged him, talking, 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 did it allow him to put into effect what he knew? It was like he was forgetting himself. Once in a while, he had come out of the ocean, of the ocean of argument, and he'll say something bright and something good, but then another one will talk again, and they made him forget what he knew. But now they are quiet, and God alone was talking to him. You know, in affliction, sometimes we make the mistake. We knock at this person's door. I'm going through this. We knock at this other person's door. I'm going through this. And they talk and talk and talk. And the things they say, they divert our attention from the knowledge we have. And the knowledge we have is enough to bring solution to any kind of problem that may come to our lives. The promises we have, they're great enough. They're mighty enough. And they're many enough. And they're deep enough. And they're heavenly and high enough to bring solution to every problem that may come our way. But the people that talk and talk and talk, they talk us out of the knowledge we have. Let them all keep quiet. And let the Spirit of God speak inside you. You will come out of the problem. Look at verse 2. I know that thou canst do everything. How many, thing, how many things can God do in your life? I said how many things can God do in your life? And that no thought can be withholding from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel? Without knowledge, therefore have I altered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. God talking to him now. Now he said, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. But now mine eyes see thee. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Verse 7, and it was so, and it will be so. In your life, it will be so. In your family, it will be so. And it was so that after the Lord has spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, my wrath is kindled against thee, against thy two friends. For ye have not spoken of me, the sin that is right, as my servant Job has. Therefore, take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you. God will answer the prayer of Job. You know, many times you read the Bible and you just read, read, and then you pass over. You're too much in a hurry. Impatient heart, be still. What though it tarries long, what though the triumph song has not been sung, yet he will come, he will not tarry. And so be still, be still, impatient heart, be still. Don't be too much in a hurry. You know, in chapter 1, God said unto Satan, have you considered my servant Job? In chapter 2, God said unto Satan, Have you seen my servant Job at the beginning? My servant Job at the end? My servant Job. And so 
all that happened in between did not cancel the title and did not cancel the testimony and did not cancel the word of the Lord concerning Job, my servant Job. I pray that affliction will not cancel your kingdom title testimony in Jesus' name. Verse 9, so he life first the Temanite, and Bildad, the Shuhite, and so far, the Nehemathite, went and did as the Lord commanded them. And the Lord accepted, tell me, Job. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. And when, when he prayed for his friends, also the Lord, tell me, tell me. I want to hear this one from somebody's mouth. Talk like a preacher now. Where are you? Give Job twice as much as he had before. Can I tell you, you are going to have double portion? Yeah. Of everything you have lost, double portion? Yeah. Of the seed they took away violently from you, double portion? Yeah. Of the seed your friends and your neighbors and family people are saying, you see yourself now, you see yourself now, that thing is gone. Don't worry about what they say. God says a double portion is coming for you. Let's come back to James chapter 5. Point number two now. The precious promises for adverse situations. The precious promises for adverse situations. I'm reading from James chapter 5 verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. He tells us here, any affliction? There are promises of God that show us, that assure us that if affliction comes, it's going to go back the way it came. I said it's going to go back the way it came. And if you have experienced affliction, you're now about to receive the fulfillment of the promises of God, precious promises of God for adverse situations. It will set you free. Remember what I said at the beginning, just hearing the promise, not too much prayer, hearing the promise that affliction will flee away. Psalm 34. I'm reading from verse 19, Psalm 34, verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. How many afflictions are you free from today? The Lord will deliver you from them all. All. All the Lord is talking about you, the Lord is thinking about you, and your afflictions will vanish away in Jesus' name. Even if you cost it by yourself, now that you realize and come to the Lord, the Lord will forgive your foolishness, and all that affliction you caused by yourself, it will be taken away in Jesus' name. If evil powers, evil people have caused it in your life, the Lord will silence those evil people. Yeah. And you know, look up here. Sometimes when I'm preaching, I have to, you know, if I hold my fingers and hold my arm, you know, communication will not go well. And so I have to move my hand. You understand? And so when I say, if it comes from them, and you say, why is he pointing to me? I'm not pointing to you. I'm pointing to them outside. Am I pointing to you? Are you the cause of anybody's problem? No, you are the solution. And the solution will come through you in Jesus' name. 
Uh, let, let's look at Psalm 50. In Psalm 50, I'm reading from verse 5. Psalm 50, verse 5, it says, Gather my saints together unto me. That's what we have done today. We have gathered together from our various, uh, you know, places of abode. And it says, Gather them together, those that have made covenant with me by sacrifice. And we say, Lord, we have gathered together. What are we expecting? Look at verse 15. And call upon me. And call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me Amen Psalm 91 Psalm 91 the precious promises for adverse situations precious promises for adverse situations I'm reading from Psalm 91 and I'm reading from verse 14 verse 14 because he has set his love upon me therefore will i deliver him who is the him i'm reading about here i said who is the him i'm reading about here you are the one who will deliver you i will set him on high because he has known my name do you know his name is jehovah his deliverer he is redeemer and is the liberator is the one that breaks every yoke you know his name he'll break your yoke he shall call upon me and i will answer him i will be with him in trouble i will deliver him where is he i will deliver him where is she there praise the lord it is going to happen and honor him with long life, with long life. Job's wife said, cause God and die, with long life. Some friends said, why are you still alive? What's making you happy? Why are you still, you know, making plans? I'll go there, I'll get there, I'll get there. Don't you know your condition? Yes, I know, with long life, with long life. I'm waiting for you. With long life, it will satisfy you with long life. When you go back home, you can read the final verses of Job chapter 42. And you see the long life, long life, long life, until he had children again. And then he had grandchildren again. And then he had great grandchildren again. Until the first generation, that promise is coming to pass in your life. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. And show him my salvation. Are you going to see it today? But look at this, look at this. James chapter 5 verse 13. James chapter 5 verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. You see, Mary, let him sing psalms. You see, the many people, they delay their singing. They say, I cannot sing now. Or maybe they try and manage to sing in church. I'm a member of the youth choir, and so I will still do my duty. I will sing, praise the Lord, but go beyond that. I mean, I'm a member of the adult choir. I'll still do my part and sing, praise the Lord, but go beyond that. In the dungeon, in the pit where you are be thrown, in that prison, sing unto the Lord, your song will be break the bars of iron you remember never give up never give up never give up to your sorrows jesus will bid them depart trust in the lord trust in the lord listen to this sing when your trials are greatest sing when your trials are greatest Trust in the Lord and take heart. It is at the time, at that point, that problem is still there. 
that challenge is still there that affliction is still there seeing when your trials are greatest sing unto the lord trust him and take heart after you have prayed and maybe you have fasted and maybe you have asked other the people to make intercession for you and it appears nothing has happened switch over into singing did you hear that switch over into singing and then before you sing one two stanzas of a favorite song you know very well everything that's called problem will collapse in your life second chronicles chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 21 sing when your trials are greatest trust in the lord and take heart second chronicles chapter 20 verse 21 and when they had consulted with the people he appointed tell me singers unto the lord and that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say praise the lord for his mercy endure it forever and when they began tell me and when they began you will begin to sing don't cry again that habitual complaint don't complain again try singing i said try singing i said try singing it says and when they began to sing and to praise the lord sent ambushments against the children of ammon moab and mount seir which were come against judah and they were smitting ah your enemies are smitting for the children of ammon and moab stood up against the inhabitants of mount seir utterly to destroy to slay and to destroy them and when they had made an edge of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. They didn't destroy any of the children of God, they will not destroy you. They couldn't touch any of the people of God, they will not be able to touch you. Verse 24, and when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies falling to the earth, and none escaped. And none escaped. Are you getting the story? Are you getting the fulfillment? Are you having the joy? Are you seeing your affliction going? Are you seeing your problems dissolving? Have you seen that God has answered your prayer? Have you seen that the time of singing has come for you? I will sing. Acts of the Apostles chapter 16. And I'm reading from verse 24. Acts chapter 16 verse 24. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. That's affliction. That's an adverse situation. That's what some people see and they say, but I'm an apostle. But I'm a worker. But I'm a minister. But I'm a preacher, but I'm a member of a good church. Not only that I'm born again, I'm a child of the king. How should this happen to me? Have you forgotten sing when your trials are greatest and the Lord will bring you out? Verse 25, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. And what did they do? tell me out aloud tell me as if that is what you are going to begin to do and he sang praises unto god 
and the prisoners had them. And suddenly, that's how miracles come. And suddenly, that's how your deliverance will come. And suddenly, that's how it will break your yoke. And suddenly, that's how it will sweep away all those enemies from your life. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. So that the foundation of the prison, foundations of the prison, plural, all the foundations, all the foundations of the prison is shaking. And tell me the next word there. Immediately, immediately today, immediately this afternoon, immediately for you, immediately for your family, immediately for the afflicted, immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands loosed. Loose them, Lord. Set them free. Break their yoke. Destroy the power of the enemy from their lives and set your people free. You're free. Where are you there? Freedom, total freedom in Jesus' name. Point number three now the powerful prayer of his appointed servants. And let me show you something. Come to verse 13. And see the word, we're looking for the word pray or prayer. The same thing, pray or prayer. Pray. Verse 13, look at the word. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Look at verse 14. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. Prayer, prayer. And then it goes on to say, look at verse 15 now, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. It's there in every verse. Look at verse 16. Confess your false one to another and pray one for another. You see that again. And the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Look at verse 17. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly. He prayed. Prayer everywhere. Look at verse 18. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. And the earth brought forth her fruit. In all those verses from verse 13 all through to verse 18, there's prayer. On every bench, on every chair, and every, every level, there's going to be prayer today. In every section, every section, there's going to be prayer today. And the prayer will pray on every seat there, in every place there, at every level there. Everyone pray today. Praise the Lord. The Lord has answered your prayer. Look at verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. We call that personal prayer. Personal prayer. You're afflicted, don't cry, pray. You have a problem, don't shed tears, pray. Let him pray. That's personal prayer. And the Lord will answer every personal prayer here today in Jesus' name. Psalm 66, and I'm reading from verse 18. 66, verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me, but verily, truly, certainly, assuredly, God has heard me, and he has attended to the voice of my prayer. He will attend to the voice of your prayer. Number one, personal prayer. Come to verse 14. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. That's called pastoral prayer. Pastoral prayer. You belong to the church. And there are elders in the church. 
and as the elders in the church as the pastors in the church and as i pray for you today god will answer the prayer but i want to show you something about the elders of the church praying i pray god will open your eyes of understanding give me a good amen and God will open your heart to face in Jesus' name. Look at Genesis chapter 20, verse 7. Genesis chapter 20, verse 7. Now therefore, restore the man his wife. For he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee. He shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. Did I hear an amen? amen? We need to understand this. Abraham still had his own family problem. Abraham did not have the promised child yet. Sarah was still barren. And yet, God said, Abimelech, you know what? The one you may be looking at who has not got all his own problems solved. I've given him authority to pray for you and your family and you and your family will be healed. You know, sometimes because we know our pastors, our elders, and we say, I know him, he has this problem and this problem and he's been trying to claim the promise of God and he has not claimed the promise and he has not got it how can I go the reason you go is because God said is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church whatever you know about him about her he will pray for you your problem will be solved Look at this other side. Now, Abraham had his own challenge. He's been waiting for the promised child, Isaac. And the promised child has not come. And somebody is coming to me, pray for me. Abraham could have said, ah, you think you have a problem? I have my own problem too. I've been waiting for 24 years. And the problem has not been solved. And you want me to pray for you? Some people say, how can I go out and witness and testify and talk to people and encourage them and say, come to the Lord? They will say, uh-huh, but we know you in this community. We know your problem. And because of that, they will not. But Abraham prayed. And when Abraham prayed, in the next chapter, chapter 21, the long-standing problem in the family of Abraham was totally removed. Abimelech was healed in chapter 20, and the miracle child came in chapter 21. If you're a leader, if you're a pastor, if you're an elder, and you say, I have my own problem, how can I pray for the people? Go ahead and pray for them. In the next chapter, in the next chapter your solution has also come. Let me just remind you of Job. You read it when you get back home. God told the friends, I'm against you. My wrath is against you. Therefore, go to Job, my servant. He will pray for you. And Job had not been healed. Job still had his own problem. And they now came to him and they said, The Lord said, you should pray for us. But you know my problem. Are you mocking me? But you know my challenge. How can I pray for you? And I've just been telling you, I went forward. I couldn't find him. I went back. I couldn't find I went everywhere. I used to see him. I couldn't find him. And I'm the one to pray for you. Yes, God has appointed you. He prayed for them in verse 9. In verse 10, God reversed his captivity. Go ahead and pray for them. In the next verse, God is going to reverse your situation. Number one, personal prayer. Number two, 
pastoral prayer come back to james chapter 5 and i'm reading from verse i'm reading from verse 15 in verse 15 and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the lord shall raise him up and if he has committed sins they shall be forgiven him number three that's powerful prayer powerful prayer it's a powerful prayer that has two edges the two edges of the sword sickness healed and sins forgiven and the prayer we pray today will be a powerful prayer every sin you confess to the lord and you repent of he will forgive you in jesus name and then any sickness in your body he will heal you in jesus name i am healed who is that i said who is getting healed there you are the one mark chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 17 and this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues they shall take off serpents if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them nobody will have power to kill you they will not terminate your life they will not terminate your progress you will not die in anybody's hand and they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover you recover in jesus name come back james chapter 5 there's personal prayer james chapter 5 there's pastoral prayer james chapter 5 there's powerful prayer james chapter 5 verse 16 confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed pitiful prayer pitiful prayer when you see people what they're going through and then they confess they said i want to tell you something this is my fault i was warned the word of god came to me i shouldn't have gone that direction i shouldn't have done that thing i shouldn't have joined that company i shouldn't have gotten myself involved but you know i did in disobedience and now this has come upon me and so hear their story and they confess their fault and how their hand was in this and they got involved you're pitiful as a child of god you have the nature of god look at verse 11. verse 11 behold we count them happy which endure ye have heard of the patience of job and ye have seen the end of the lord that the lord is very give me the word there pitiful and of tender mercies and you have the nature of god and after they confess their sins you say don't worry about that you know even myself in the past i got into a similar problem and the lord was merciful and i can understand what you are talking i can identify with you in the problem you're relating narrating and when you have that pitiful prayer the lord will answer somebody said a good amen first peter chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 8 first peter chapter 3 verse 8 finally be ye all of one mind having compassion one of another love as brethren be pitiful be courteous be pitiful that's what god will do he pities the sinner he pities the one suffering because of his faults and so you'll not condemn them you'll not say so you did that you went that far you put your hand in something like that don't question them like that they're discouraged already don't destroy them 
be pitiful and pray for them. Psalm 103. Psalm 103. I'm reading from verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us, like a father pitieth his children. That's how to pity those brethren who come to you, or you go to them, and you hear their problem, pity them. Like God will pity them. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pities them that fear them. Come back to James chapter 5. And we're reading here now from the second part of verse 16. James chapter 5, second part of verse 16. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, tell me, availeth much. Prevailing prayer. Prevailing prayer. You take that problem to the Lord. You take that challenge and that mountain to the Lord. And you say, by the grace of God, the blood of Jesus has washed me, cleansed me, made me pure, made me righteous. And because of that, I put on the righteousness of Christ. And it says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Your prayer will avail. Your prayer will prevail. Look at First John chapter three, verse twenty-two. First John chapter three, verse twenty-two. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him, because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing is in his sight whatsoever we ask we receive of him anybody going to receive there today of course you are going to receive number one personal prayer number two pastoral prayer go ahead tell me number three powerful prayer number four pitiful prayer number five prevailing prayer number six look at james chapter five and i'm reading from verse 17 elias was a man subject to like passions as we are and he prayed earnestly 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 that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Passionate prayer. Passionate prayer. He wasn't praying and dozing, praying and sleeping, praying and yawning, praying and tired, and praying and wanting to go to sleep. He said, this one concerns the nation. And this is a great problem. And this must be something you know, that I express to the Lord with great passion and great conviction. And he prayed and God answered. Passionate prayer. Look at First Kings chapter 17. And I read from verse 1. First Kings chapter 17 verse 1. He had prayed, and now he came. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, he had been standing before him, praying passionately, earnestly, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain this year, but according to my word. He had the key. What he locked on earth was locked in heaven. What he opened on earth was opened in heaven. This morning, you have the key. 
Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth today will be loosed in heaven in Jesus' name. Passionate prayer. Come to verse 18 of James chapter 5. James chapter 5 verse 18. And he prayed again. And he prayed again. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. And the earth brought forth her fruit. Your business will bring forth. Your family will bring forth. Your spiritual life will bring forth. He prayed again. You will pray. This one is persevering prayer. Persevering prayer. Look at it. First Kings chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat, and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. In your family, abundance. In your life, abundance. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Camel. And he cast himself down upon the earth. And he put his face between his knees. And said to his servant, Go up now and look toward the sea. And he went up and he looked and said, There is nothing. And so Elijah did not say, Okay, God changed his mind. God never changes his mind. I said God never changes his mind. He said there's going to be abundance of rain. It's going to come. And he said, go again. He went the second time. There's nothing. Persevering. Go again the third time. He went. There's nothing. Persevering prayer. Go and see that again. He went the first time. He came back. There is nothing. Elijah is not the man to give up. And you are not the brother to give up. You are not the sister to give up. Go again. The first time he came back, there is nothing. You must go back again. Go back again. The sixth time he said there is nothing. And now he said, go again. The seventh time, persevering prayer, you will not give up. I said, you will not give up. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up and say to Ahab, Prepare thy chariots and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile, and it comes to pass in the meanwhile, while the message was going on, the heaven was black with clouds and winds. And there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. As you're riding back in your bus, in your car, in the taxi, or whatever, on your motorcycle, whatever. As you're riding back today, great abundance is following you. And the great ministration is being fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Personal prayer is going to be answered today. Pastoral prayer is going to be answered today. Powerful prayer is going to be answered today. Beautiful prayer is answered today. Prevailing prayer answered today. Passionate prayer answered today. Persevering prayer answered today. I rejoice with you today. It's the day of your breakthrough. It's the day of the moving of your mountain. And it's the day of the blessing of the Lord upon your life. 
before you stand up to pray Ezekiel chapter 34 I'm reading from verse 26 Ezekiel chapter 34 Ezekiel chapter 34 verse 26 and I will make them and the places round about my heel a blessing and I will cause the shower to come down in a season this season and there shall be showers of blessing and there shall be showers of blessing where i said where in your life when now at this very time showers of blessing there showers of blessing there i said showers of blessing there over there i said showers of blessing there Open your mouth, open your mouth and talk to the Lord. It's a new day. It's a day of blessing. It's a day of deliverance. And it's a day of miracle. It's a day of power manifestation. It's a day of all your sorrow, all your sin, all your sin and all your suffering being taken away. It's your day. It's your day. You have persevered as an afflicted saint. Tell the Lord, no more complaint, no more complaint, no more complaint, no more morning call upon the name of the Lord the Lord is going to answer your prayer today the Lord is going to answer never give up never give up never give up to your sorrows Jesus will be them depart trust in the Lord trust in the Lord sing when your trials are greatest trust in the Lord and take heart talk to the Lord right now pray unto the Lord right now personal prayer personal prayer is anyone afflicted let him pray personal 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 table it before the lord expose it before the lord express it before the lord show the lord where you suffer Whatever it is, the affliction, personal prayer, powerful prayer, powerful prayer, powerful prayer, powerful prayer, not an indolent prayer, not a powerless prayer, not a prayer that makes you doze, that makes you sleep, powerful, pitiful, it pities your condition. If there's sin, confess that to the Lord. Any fault, confess that to the Lord. Any blame, don't shift blame. Don't accuse other people. Don't criticize other people. Don't murmur against other people. When you confess your faults to the Lord, He'll pity you and forgive you. As far as the east is from the west, He will remove your transgression, your sin, your fault. Prevail in prayer. Prevailing prayer. The factual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I'm not going to wait till another time. This is the time. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing. Mercy. Drops around us are falling, but for the showers will plead. Let me go for the daybreakers. I will not let you go. I will not let you go, except to bless me. Prevailing prayer. 
passionate prayer Jabez prayed the evil was there Jabez prayed that it may not hurt him Jabez prayed that evil may not come upon me Jabez prayed and the Lord heard him and the Lord enlarged his coast Jabez prayed passionate prayer Elias was a man of like passions as we are like passions as we are of like passions as we are and he prayed he prayed earnestly prayed earnestly be earnest be earnest be passionate be serious be determined be diligent about this passionate prayer persevering prayer men ought always to pray and not to faint men always ought to pray and not to faint avenge me of my adversaries and the church will not answer for a time but she kept on going, she kept on going, she kept on going. And they just said, Do I fear not man, fear not God, nor regard man? Yet this woman, by her persistent coming, importunity, perseverance in prayer, lest she weary me. I will answer her. And Jesus said, See what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect that cry unto him day and night? Surely, verily, he will avenge them. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith in the earth? Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. I shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have. He shall have. He shall have whatsoever he says. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believers persevere in prayer there is pastoral prayer the prayer of faith shall save the sick heal the sick will break the yoke will destroy the evil thing God answers prayer. God answers prayer. He answers prayer, personal prayer. He answers prayer, powerful prayer. 
He answers prayer, beautiful prayer. He answers prayer, prevailing prayer. He answers prayer, passionate prayer. He answers prayer, persevering prayer. He answers prayer, pastoral prayer. Believe the Lord, begin to thank Him. Be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. Another year, the deadness of Sarah's womb. He was fully persuaded that what God has promised is able to perform. And therefore, he gave, he was giving glory to God, calling those things which be not as though they were. Giving glory to God. Sing when your trials are greatest. Trust in the Lord and take heart. In Jesus' name we pray. God has answered your prayer. No more crying. No more complaining. No more criticizing. No more murmuring. No more going from valley to mountain. God has answered my prayer. Where are you? Where am I? God has answered my prayer. God has answered your prayer. Keep up those and Father, in Jesus' name. You are a God that will not fail. You are a faithful God. You have promised your children. And you have told us how to pray. And we have prayed in that way. And I'm asking, Lord, let there be a performance, a fulfillment in every life today, in Jesus' name. Wipe all their tears away.